Shia LaBeouf as a devout Italian Catholic priest and eventual saint? Sure, why not? Let's talk about Padre Pio. This is David Stark from Watcher Pass. I'm here to talk to you about Padre Pio, which is coming to theaters on June 2nd, 2023. It is a story of one of the most revered Italian Catholic saints, Padre Pio, and some of the unrest that occurred after World War I. It is uh, directed by Abel Ferrara and stars Shia LaBeouf. That is kind of the main claim to fame uh, for this movie. And it has a fantastic performance by him. But my hot take is, look, I think you should probably pass on it. It has some really great performances, specifically from Shia LaBeouf. He does a fantastic job in this. And it has a beautiful setting. But, but these, in my mind, don't overcome a story that is pretty fractured and slow and also feels like it should have been two separate movies. Now, they do relate to each other, but it is a very kind of loose relationship that wasn't clear to me uh, until even after the second viewing, until after I kind of talked to the director in an interview. So I was really excited about this movie. I was really interested to see uh, Shia LaBeouf in this, and it just didn't hit me the way I was hoping it would. So I'm going to tell you a little more about the film, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like, and then go into kind of briefly into the ending that's kind of how they relate so it kind of has to go into that but it'll be very brief uh and before that i will keep it vague i will keep it spoiler free but when i get into that ending discussion i would turn it off if you don't want to know what happens in the film because there will be spoilers so in padre pio you have kind of two dual stories you've got the story of padre pio and kind of his uh, challenges of faith is like growth in this like catholic order and some of the kind of like conflict that he had the spiritual conflict that he had growing into this person that would eventually become this revered saint and then you also have some unrest in this small italian town of san giovanni rotondo the director abel ferrara said it's like on the achilles heel of italy it's like a little bit of a mountainous area uh you had people coming back from world war one after the end of the war and just this kind of like climate of unrest that occurred after that you had uh some political unrest you had some young people that wanted uh some change and that led to some conflict there that is different from the conflict that padre pio had but they are they are related uh, and i will tell you about that later so things i liked about this movie the first look shia labeouf was fantastic like he did a really really good job he's a phenomenal actor and his portrayal of padre pio was really good he, he portrayed him emotionally he portrayed like some of the uh inner faith conflict that happened with him and he kind of had this tortured journey that was really amazing to see on screen i think you know shia labeouf is a fantastic actor and this definitely shows uh some of his acting chops in a story that you know was not what i expected from him the second thing i really loved is the setting look it, this film was actually filmed in san giovanni rotondo and it you get that sense right from the start you got these old buildings you've got uh this beautiful like italian monastery you have this sense of being in this film that really comes through and i think a lot of that is because it was filmed in the actual place that this happened you can't really ask for a more authentic recreation than that and the third thing i liked is the music this also helped to kind of highlight the setting because it had this beautiful classical music that fit perfectly it helped to kind of evoke the Italian countryside, and it really fit with the overall story and the setting. So things I didn't love as much. The first thing I didn't love is, look, it's a slow movie. It's an hour, 47 minutes long. Not a ton happens, despite there being, you know, political, spiritual, and physical conflict. It doesn't progress very quickly. There's a lot of time set, like setting the stage, setting kind of like the unrest that's happening, which is generally usually good. But for me, uh, it didn't really help me to get kind of like excited about this movie. And then by the time things started to pick up, it was already kind of a little bit too late for me. Uh, the second thing I didn't love, I'll call it side stories, but really this is kind of two distinct stories that don't really feel like they come together, except at the very end. Um, you've got large portions of the film that take place with different characters. And for me, I couldn't tell if this was like, the past or if th these were parallel stories i think maybe i needed some more i don't know guidance at the start like a like a info screen at the start to kind of relate things to me i, I bet uh in italy th th this seems like a big story this seems like something that you wouldn't need to kind of have some background on but uh for me not really growing up with either of these stories i didn't grow up catholic i didn't know about the underlying event that happened in uh san giovanni rotondo I just had no idea what was going on and so these two stories felt distinct and separate i didn't really feel like they were related like i said like i keep saying they do relate at the very end but for a large part of the movie i was like why is it going back and forth like do i am i supposed to know someone is one of these people supposed to be padre pio uh it it was very confusing for me and that did not lead to my enjoyment of the film and the last thing i didn't love as much 
I'm gonna call it some of the delivery. It, it just some of the lines didn't seem to be authentic. It could be because they were Italian actors who were, you know, speaking English. I, I wish, kind of wish it was actually in Italian. I think that might have helped some of the drama and, and made it feel a little bit more authentic when those were happening. For me, sometimes when there was like some conflict, like the lines just didn't really have the right emotion. They didn't really hit right. And some of the, you know, overall unrest that was occurring just didn't sound right with some of the way that the lines were delivered. Um, but you know what? It could also be because I just didn't really enjoy the story that much. So I wasn't really uh, getting behind these characters when they were doing it. So that being said, uh, Padre Pio comes to theaters on June 2nd, 2023. So you can check it out if you want to. Look, it has a really great performance by Shia LaBeouf. It deals with some topics that are sadly still relevant to us now. Uh, so it's definitely something that is interesting, but ultimately my recommendation was to pass on it. But if you do see it, let me know what you think. I'm going to go into the ending. So if you don't want to know what happens in this movie, turn this off now. Uh, just know that Padre Pio comes to theaters on June 2nd, 2023. Uh, but if you want to keep going, there will be spoilers. But again, it's based on a historical character and an historical event. So it's really tough to spoil that kind of stuff. So in Padre Pio, like I said, there's two kind of parallel storylines. You've got the soldiers coming back from uh, World War I to this small town in Italy called San Giovanni Rotondo. And then you also have Padre Pio in his own kind of like inner conflict, inner spiritual conflict, you know, trying to kind of grow as a more faithful person, trying to kind of deal with uh, the sins of his parishioners and, and whatnot. And trying and and those two seem to not relate because so on the one hand you've got these citizens who are coming back from the war the the russian revolution had just happened and it seems like some of these ideas are coming back with both some of the soldiers who fought uh in the war and also with some of the younger kind of like educated land owning people that are really buying into the like socialist communist ideology that is causing some unrest with the older guard, the kind of land-owning people who are keeping the land, trying to take advantage of it, working the, I don't know, peasants? I don't know if that's the right word, but working kind of the, the poorer individuals in this town, essentially to death, to profit from their labor. This all comes to a head in an election where you have some political maneuvering, some physical maneuvering, some, you know, underhanded tactics. Essentially, there is a lot of unrest as the young, like, communists try to get the townsfolk to vote for a communist person to kind of install socialism into this area. And the kind of, the, the I don't know, ruling class, the class in power tries to stop this, tries to squelch this. Um, but the realities of what is happening help kind of falls on the, the communist party's side. Like during the buildup, someone like physically works himself to death because they, they can't afford to take any time off. They're working themselves like crazy and they actually like work themselves to death. This kind of ignites a fire in people and eventually this leads to a big vote for mayor uh between you know kind of the like the people in powers uh, candidate and this uh communist socialist candidate head to head the socialist party wins they win the election fair and square they democratically elected them but like i said it still has some relevant aspects to today the party in power, the kind of like ruling class say, oh, this was rigged, like this election is fake, the, the, the my candidate won, uh, the other side like cheated, rigged the vote, whatever you want to say. And they kind of deny that democratic process. So when the, when, you know, the, the victorious socialist party goes to kind of like take over the capital and install their government, they are met with a wall of soldiers and high-ranking officials in the current government saying like no the the election was false the election was fake you know you go home go home the socialists don't want to do that they want to you know take what they won and so that leads to a conflict that causes that has the um party in power the you know soldiers essentially massacre several of the young revolutionaries in this kind of needless sense, like they didn't really do anything. They were just kind of heading towards the Capitol. Uh, and, and someone, it seems, got spooked and fired. And that led to everyone else firing and a number of people died. That's one story. The other story is Padre Pio and his kind of like growth in the church. He has his own kind of fears about not being devout enough. He has to kind of like deal with his own uh, faith and his own kind of visions. He seems to kind of have these visions that he's not good enough, that he's not devout enough, that he is not like true enough uh, of a Catholic. And that leads to some erratic behavior, which Shia LaBeouf is 
perfectly suited for and it leads to some kind of like tortured moments where he is fighting against himself fighting his inner demons to try to like become the most pious person that he can he also has to deal with parishioners there is a confession that happens with someone that says some things that are pretty terrible uh and he kind of has to be the you know priest in that he gets a little more emotional than i would expect a priest to get but i think that shows like how devout he is and also it still show it still highlights shia labeouf's amazing acting um when he's trying to like deal with her confession and and the things that have to happen uh, because of that but overall he kind of grows and grows and eventually he like leads a mass in this um in this monastery and this mass i think occurs during uh the like revolution that was happening in san giovanni rotondo and when and i think after that mass when those people are dead uh, it seems like Padre Pio like gets the stigmata. He gets like some some wounds on his hands, and when he's like praying about this, the and when he's praying about this at the end of the film, uh, an arm comes down and like embraces him, which I think is supposed to be God. It looks kind of like the arm scene in Jurassic Park where it comes down to oh thank God you're here, and then it turns out to be an arm. This actually is I think still attached, but it is this like ghostly arm. That comes down, which I think shows him, you know, that he has now kind of become that faithful Catholic priest that he is supposed to. So, like I said, two very different stories. They converge at the end because Padre Pio gets the stigmata when this massacre happens. I didn't really catch that until after talking to Abel Ferreira in an interview. So take that for what it's worth. I think this film would have benefited from some more background information at the start and maybe like a clear uh connection between those two and between like a clear cross crossing over between them it did feel like there were two separate stories that were kind of like told at the same time but that being said that's padre pio it comes to theaters on june 2nd 2023 check out if you want to uh maybe check out an italian it might be more interesting in italian uh let me know what you think let me know if i got it right let me know if i got it wrong um but that's padre pio and thanks so much for watching if you liked this review please like and subscribe to this channel it helps me out a lot make sure all my new content goes straight to you thank you <music> Thank you.